there in Bible study. Okay, so it's gave me a message there. Um, so we're gonna, I can't wait to get and listen and learn all that you all are going to teach me tonight. Um, let's pray and then we'll just start, like I said, just keep, keep on mute in case you have some background noise and uh, then unmute when you want to share. And look, I am ready. I have got my note pad ready my pens ready y'all gonna teach me something good tonight i'm so excited about the word i was telling sheila and a couple of girls a couple saturdays ago or last saturday we had breakfast and i said i just am so hungry and can't get enough of the word i'm just um the more i'm in it the more i want to be in it are y'all like that yes it's just so good and so encouraging so let's pray and we're gonna get started okay Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for these ladies and those who can't be here tonight. I just thank you for them. Thank you for this opportunity. You are so good to us. You have blessed us um, beyond what any of us deserve. And we just thank you for this time together. We thank you that we're excited about your word, that we're hungry for your word. And we just want you to make your presence known in our midst tonight. You do what you want to do and you just fill our hearts until we're overflowing and just help us to be encouraged. And um, I just pray that you will teach us something new tonight and just, just uh, make yourself known in Jesus name. Amen. All righty. So listen, we'll just take a few minutes, everybody. You know, we started in Acts 13 and 14. And let me ask you, were you a little surprised when you started in Acts 13, 14 to find out that we were going to Galatians? Anybody? <laughs> I would have never known to have gone there had it not been in the front of my new inductive study Bible that I've used for 22 years. And uh, so I'm really, really um thankful for that. So you all start with what you learned or what you want to share about Acts 13 and 14 that really stood out to you all. And uh, oh, I see Miss Jody is connecting. There's Miss Donna Sade. Hey, girls. Um, so um, y'all just take turns, just take a few minutes because we have these chapters and then Galatians 1, 2, and 3 to go through. And we're not going to go through every single verse, of course. But okay, who wants to start? Go. Don't be bashful, y'all. Don't be bashful. Anybody get anything from Acts 13 and 14? Well, I I hate to start always, but no, no, no. Uh, chapter 13, I remember you saying, and I've had to live that in the last week, nothing can stand um, in the way of God's will. Mm. And just, I've just been going through something in the last week that's been a hard struggle for our family. And so I just keep saying, God, this still can be in your will. So that, mm -hmm. as I was going over, re trying to review before we got on here, that um, I just remember writing that down when you said that. And that just, it stopped me in my tracks. Wow. And he knew what was coming. And um, so that's just because he loves us so. Yeah. And he just lights the way. Hey, Miss Sharon, I see you getting on there, here. <laughs> yeah. You're on mute, honey. I had a time. It took me about five tries to get on. Uh-oh. Well, Jody, I see that you're not, your picture's not on there, and you don't have to be, but if you want to say something, just unmute yourself. I'm so glad that you're here. Vicki, that's really good. Um, I, I'm so glad that you shared that with us. All right, does somebody else want to share anything you've got out of Acts 13 and or 14? Like being reminded how God, like in Acts 13, just right there at the beginning was 
set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I have called them. How he actually sets us aside. He already knows. And that's just a reminder to myself that he has chosen us, you know. Yes. For what we're, we've got to do in our. That's so good. See these nuggets right here. We get to write these down. We get to chew on these. It's so important for us to share in our growth. I love that. And I need to be reminded of these things as well, you know, because I try to work ahead and I try to go ahead and get everything recorded. And so it, this is so refreshing to me to get to come back and listen at all these nuggets that you all have. Share some of the things you wrote down. Somebody else? I wrote, I wrote down, I like the part where it says, take care that what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wander and perish. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. Mm. That just, just struck me. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. Very powerful. Yes. Just made me think of what's going on in this crazy world. And it is crazy. But you know what? We can rest and have that peace that nothing that's going on is taking him by surprise. He is fully aware. And that's a place of rest for us. We don't have to know the outcome. Uh, we just know who's in control ultimately. Yep. So that's where some rest and peace come in. That's awesome. Somebody else? And uh, this is Donna in uh, Acts 14. Um, evangelism is important in sharing the good news, but also just encouragement and strengthening. I'd written down strengthening is, is needed too, you know, for the yeah. disciples. They had to strengthen each other, which is what we're supposed to do. I, I agree. Iron sharp, sharpens iron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need each other, y'all. That's good stuff. I'm glad that uh, Paul opened the door for the Gentiles to be included, uh, to hear the ministry, and yeah. to be accepted just like the Jews were through faith. Mm. Yes. That's good. Sure did. God had a plan. He does have a plan for everyone. I just I love the part, and I, I'm not this is all I'm gonna share. That the magician uh that was blind, the pro council was now a believer, so opposite. Opposition didn't change the outcome. It came against them, but didn't prevail because nothing can thwart the plans of God. Nothing can thwart it. Nobody has that much control. So ultimately he's in control. Right, right there along that same line I had, and that may have been even some of your teaching that there's always opposition, but we have a calling and must persevere. Yes. That's good. Um, you know, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think sometimes we get in this little um, slumber of thought and think that there's only certain people who have a calling and that is contrary to what God's word says. Everybody mm -hmm. has a calling. Mm -hmm. everyone has a calling so we have to persevere that's good but with that calling Kim there's tribulations and you know we don't want to think about those things but right. they count it joy our church has been going through the book of Acts day by day uh -huh. the uh, we had a challenge at the beginning of, of this month because there's 28 days and there's 28 chapters. So I've been loving this 
And I even actually ministered on, on Acts chapter 12. I got to speak at a church Sunday morning and I just really fell in love again with Acts and, and it's just refreshed and rekindled, you know, a love in me. But that's what I, verse 22 was my, my theme for that, for chapter 14, but I didn't leave it off that through many tribulations, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. We want to hear about the good things. But listen, it goes hand in hand. We got to remember that there's no resurrection without a death. Right. So there's many tribulations. And, and I don't, I, and you know, I don't think that's a bad thing because it keeps us humble, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It lets us know, just like you said a while ago, he's in control. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's in control. Yes. Amen. He sure is. And if not for the tribulations, the trying times, we would not know him in those ways. We, we have to, we have, and you know what? It allows him to know us and to see what needs to be corrected and loved on and changed in us through the trials and tribulations that we go through. And I mean, look, things get rough, things get bad, but we know who already knows and we know who it is not taken in by surprise and so I, it, to me that's just that rest okay lord i don't understand this i don't like this i don't want to do this but this is where we're going so i'm going with you Amen. So teach me grow me through the pain of this and know me in a way, you know, and let me know you in a way that I've not experienced you because I haven't walked. That's this what tribulation does, Kim. It, it does take you to a place in him um, that you can see his tenderness like you've never known it before. Mm. Uh, and, you know, even Jesus said, for the joy that was set before me, how could he say that the cross was a joy? Yeah. You want to know how? Because he saw us. He didn't see just what was in front of him. And that's the thing sometimes that we get caught up on is the things that we see right in front of us. We got to let our vision take us beyond that because God's got so much more. It's one thing to have faith, but it's another thing to trust him when it looks like, why in the world are you taking me down this road? You know, but it's such a sweet, that's all I can tell you is it's a sweet, tender walk with him when you can trust him in the tribulations, in the trials, in the sorrows, in the pain. It takes you to a whole nother level in him. It really does. And he can relate with that suffering, with being distraught. He can relate with all of us wherever we are in whatever journey we're on. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. Yes. Good stuff, y'all. I was um, listening to Priscilla Shire this morning uh -huh. um, about why prayer changes everything. And we had mentioned, someone was mentioning verse 22 about um, the tribulations and that we must enter the kingdom of God. But she had said something about also what you mentioned a second ago. I think I am guilty of relying on you or others um that i feel are how do you say it more equipped with their bible study or more you know more knowledgeable um and that is one thing that she was saying you know in our prayers we need to pray for that confidence to be able to speak and share because he can use all of us. It doesn't have to be a preacher or his wife or a minister or, you know, but I am so guilty of not having the confidence. And I think that stops sometimes, stops me from saying and doing things that I need to be very bold about. Right. And our confidence is in him and I can't, right. I don't know where that passage of scripture is, but um, somebody, one of y'all probably do. Where is it in the scripture where he talks about that um, he would bring to our remembrance those words, you know, that mm -hmm. we've studied. And, you know, there are times that I've been in conversations <laughs> and I mean, it has just rolled out of me. And when I've left that conversation, <clears throat> first of all, I can't remember a thing I said. 
And then sometimes I've walked away saying, Lord, that was you. Cause I didn't know that. And you just showed up <laughs> and it was just God. Have y'all ever done that? I mean, like you've given so much wisdom to somebody and you didn't even know you had it, but see, that's just him. And that's just his faithfulness. And we're all on this journey together. We're here to help and encourage and love on one another and to grow in his word. And that's just what we're doing by look, we're here tonight. We're discussing God's word. I mean, we're his children and he's so pleased with us that we're doing this and we're doing it because we want to know him because we love him. We want to be more like him. And that's how we become all of that by being in his word so that he can manifest himself through all of us, mm -hmm. all of us, because we all belong to him. And he doesn't have any partiality. Uh, you know, when when I think about all the studies and lessons that I have taken by, you know, from Priscilla Shire or Beth Moore or Kay Arthur, when I when I look at them, I'm just like, oh my goodness, if I just knew a thimble full of what those women know, I don't. But what that's not a reason for us to not pursue, mm -hmm. you know. It's our relationship. It's our walk. So just keep pushing on. Just keep pursuing him. He's got you. Yes, I just want to encourage you with that. And you know, Kim, uh, Bible study is great. And we learn from one another. But the main thing is that you open the Bible. This is what my daughter did. And this is why I'm sharing this is because she didn't have TV or internet or any of that stuff. But she would open her Bible and she would say, I'm going to read this, Lord. Now you tell me the story. Guess what? When you do that with a sincere heart, mm -hmm. he will tell you the story. Mm -hmm. He will reveal things to you. And then that way you will have that to be able to share with others. Mm -hmm. I, I just love that because she taught me a lot with that. You just ask him to tell you the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, That's awesome. It is. Miss Jody, you have anything to share? Well, I was looking at the end of uh, the 13th chapter uh -huh. where they had been through all of that and they'd shared the gospel. Did we lose you, Jody? And they uh, it said that they shook off the dust. Of Can you hear me, Kim? I can now. You cut out for a little bit. Oh, okay. But it said that the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And that blessed me because I had sometimes I don't know what makes me think I need to preach to my kids. <laughs> They'll say, Mama's a preaching again, but I don't mean to. So I'm trying to stop that <laughs> and to pray more for them. And maybe just, you know, send them a note occasionally. <laughs> I can tell them that I'm praying for them. But I think that sometimes does more good than all of our preaching. Right. But it does, you know, when you've done what you know to do, you can be filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. We can walk in that joy by being obedient. Yeah. To him. Yes. Amen. Is everybody done with Acts 13 and 14 or has somebody else got something you want to share? If not, we'll go on to Galatians 1. This is all good stuff. Did um, any of you all mark, um, what's, what are some of the words that you marked in um, Acts 13, 14 right off? Just your key words. Somebody just Did y'all notice the key repeated, uh, the key repeated phrase, word of God, word of God, word of God, and preach the gospel. And um, I did the same in Acts as I did with, I marked gospel more than I usually do. Yes. Did you notice that they, uh, 
in the 13th chapter that it said and when the word of God was published, I wondered if, uh, if that pub word published meant the same as we think of it as being published, like a book. What is that? Is it Acts 13? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, what verse is it, Jody? Just a second. Somebody know um, while she's looking? Now, are you talking about verse 49? 49, 49 was, and the word uh -huh. of the Lord was being spread through the whole region. So let me see what that means in, um, and the word of the Lord was published in the KJV. And so it is, it means, um, transport usually to bear apart, to toss about, um, make matter, publish, be of more value is what the original Greek word for publish means in that verse. Okay, so it doesn't mean what we think it means, like and, published. Right, and if you will, the original, uh, I'm going to spell it for you, the original Greek word for that is, um, and I think you pronounce it diaphero, uh, no, diaphero, and it's D-I-F-P, D-I-A-P-H-E-R-O. If you write that down and look at it, um, to bear through, that is literally transport, usually to bear apart. Um, if you all don't have the, um, this app that I'm using, you should get it if you have iPhones. Um, it's eSword. And if you don't have an iPhone and you have an Android, it is called um, MySword, M Y. And then it's S-W-O-R-D and they're free, I think. E-Sword, you may have to pay two or three dollars for. But that's what I use. And that's why a lot of times when I'm studying and I'm looking at the uh, words, it's always in the KJV. And then I go and look to see. And without fail, it's always been the same as my NASB as far as those definitions. So um, what, was it, what was it for the iPhone? E-Sword. Uh, e I'll try to... It's e sort. I'm going to put my phone up right here and see if y'all can um, see the little icon. Can you see it? Blurry. Is it blurry? A little bit. Okay. E sword. If you look up in the app in your uh, e sword, it, it's so helpful. It's such a great tool that I use every single day. It's three ninety nine. Okay, three ninety nine. It's well worth it, y'all. It tells you how many times something's in the Bible, and that always reminds me of my daddy because he would tell you how many times something was in there. Um, <laughs> but it, it uh, breaks down the definitions for you to make sure that you have that understanding. But that's a great um, that's a great point there, Jody. Absolutely. Thank you for making that clear. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. What about Galatians 1? Y'all start sharing about Galatians 1. I hope that you notice we started Galatians with the word grace mm -hmm. in it. Okay, it's your turn. Did y'all notice? Go ahead. Somebody's going to go ahead. I thought somebody was going to say something. I hope that you looked at the chart that we, uh, Vicki posted about the sequence of events in Paul's life. That was so interesting to look through that. And then, of course, I hope you marked the word gospel, like I mentioned, I think, on the video in this. And I love that Paul opens grace to you. 
There's so something so sweet about that. Somebody got something you want to share on one? Because I've already shared all my stuff with you. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, there's uh, well, grace and peace. Is there a marking for peace? Um, I tell you what I did. I did start marking peace. Um, and I took a, um, I'm trying to find it here. I believe I took a blue pen and I did a little cloud around it. And I colored the inside of it yellow. I didn't do a square. I did like a little cloud around the word, word peace and okay. filled it in. Now that's just what I did, you know, what whatever you want to do. Because sometimes there's not, in fact, I have an app on my phone that has some of the, um, little symbols, but it, there wasn't one for it. So, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a plug in here right now. Those pens that I bought and showed y'all for $30 or $32 with those two erasers, that is the best $30 I have ever spent in my life. <laughs> they are wonderful. So that's all I'll say about that. Okay, somebody tell me something in chapter one. I like that it starts off with Paul, an apostle, not sent from man. He's yeah. not man called, but he's God called. Love that. That makes all the difference. Yeah, it does. In verse 15, it says that God who had set me apart even from my mother's womb. And, you know, you, you think sometimes that your calling is, you I mean, you struggle with your calling sometimes. But that verse that she just read, and also it goes on to say that God had set him apart from his mother's womb, which is... Uh, and called him through God's grace. Mm. And he was pleased to reveal his son in me so that he might preach him among the Gentiles. Um, God knew that Saul would be, I mean, when Saul was born, God knew that he was going to change this in his foreknowledge. He knew that Paul was going to do this, even though Paul did Paul didn't know. I mean, because right. he persecuted Jews and and tried to uh, to put down the cause of Christ in the gospel, but uh, God had a purpose in Saul's uh, transformation to bring the gospel to us as a Gentile and from his mother's womb. When you yeah. think about that, it's uh, it's something that we don't have any we don't have anything to do with. We can't do anything within our mother's womb, <laughs> um, but he. Uh, he knew in his foreknowledge his plan. Mm -hmm. And think of the seed that was probably planted when he saw there at the stoning of Stephen and mm -hmm. that, you know, how he persevered, how uh, Stephen, I mean, you know, how he glorified God, even, you know, even at his death, that that, mm -hmm. I, I think that was a seed there that was planted that, that he saw, you know, he saw that witness that. Yes. To, you mm -hmm. know, because he Very was there. point, yes. And you, you all, did you all write the definition of called down in your uh, Bible, the meaning of that in that passage of scripture that Sheila shared in verse 15, to call, it means he would, to bid, to call forth and to call by name. That's the definition. And that, that just brought it to light. I mean, he knew from the get go. And just because he started out as a persecutor, uh, did not mean that's how he was going to end up. And we may all have rough starts. I know 
know that I did and I have, you know, but God, I don't know if y'all got, I'm telling you every time I see the word, but God, I just about lose it mm -hmm. <laughs> because that just puts the stamp on it. Like nothing else matters, but God, you know, that's just, whoo, that's encouraging to me. Yes. It's all about, you know, anyway. even though uh, yeah. Paul had a reputation for being a persecutor of Christians after he was saved, the life he led before them convinced them that he was a man of God. Yeah. And that's, that's true today. Our actions, our words, you know, reflect our relationship with the Lord today. Yes. And you know what? I'm really thankful for the Holy Spirit that is in me and quickens me and lets me know, wait a second, back up. That's not right. I'm so thankful for that correction. Are y'all? Because yes. I need that. I, I need that. I want that. Yes. Um, actually, I, my favorite, well, I shouldn't say favorite because I love them all, but <laughs> verse 10, where it's like, um, or am I striving to please men? Who am I, who am I really trying to please? And I just highlighted that big time because I know within my career and then within my retirement when I'm out doing like missionary work type or something like that sometimes I think it's so easy to lose sight and maybe you're not happy with the job you're doing but then when I refocus and remember why I'm actually really doing this and it's not really it is am I doing it for somebody else or am I doing this for God it just puts a whole complete different it just enlightens the whole job and makes it so much better. And the next thing you know, the rewards are just so much more powerful. And I have actually witnessed that and experienced that so much. And so um, it's so hard in this world to get caught up and not remember such a thing sometimes. And so that is just huge highlighted. Who am I really doing this for? Wow. You know, that keeps yeah. you so in check, I, doesn't it? It sure does. I love that part. I had my finger right on that verse when you said that. <laughs> Yes. That makes all the difference. It really is when you realize if you're making a bed or if you're waiting on little toddlers or you're doing this or whatever it is you're doing, there's a scripture that says, do it heartily unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm doing, I got to remember that I'm doing as unto him. If, you know, being a wife, being a mother, uh, being a coworker, being a sister, you know, be, whatever it is, I do it unto him first. And I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you something. That's where the joy will come from. You won't begrudge it, but you will ha you will be able to do it joyfully when you realize you're doing it unto him. Oh, yeah. That's Colossians 3.22. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes. <laughs> oh, that does make a difference. Amen. Mm. Anybody else got anything you want to share on chapter one of Galatians? I just love how excited we are about his word. I just like the fact that word got out about Paul, even though he, uh, you know, in the last few verses there, it says these people in Syria and Cilicia uh, had never seen him. He said, they said that he was still... He said, I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but only they kept hearing about him. And they thought they kept hearing about this guy that was persecuting the Jews and preaching the faith that he once tried to destroy. And then it said they were glorifying God because of me. And he, he had never even seen these people. These people had never seen him, but they believed. They had faith in what he was preaching, you know. What would be, I mean, would that not be the ultimate to be the reason, the cause that somebody wanted to follow after Jesus? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was the cause here. Mm -hmm. They had heard. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, 
That's what? faith in itself. I mean, because faith is without sight. And yeah. they had never seen Paul. Yeah. <laughs> but they'd still believe. And they were glorifying. Glorifying. Glorify was my word for January. Because <laughs> my daily Bible, that daily Bible writing that we did, the, every verse seemed like had glory or glorify in it. So when I came to that verse in chapter one, I had to highlight it in <laughs> yellow because that was my word, even though it's February. But it yeah. was uh, they were glorifying God because of him. Mm. Paul was a prime example that if God could save him, he could save anybody. Oh, yeah. So you can't say I'm, I'm too bad or I've done too much or I'm too far gone for God to save me because that's not true. Right. And you know what? That gives hope for the mothers who are who um, struggle with children that are wayward hey Paul was this but God mm -hmm. so and so's this but God because he is faithful he is the same yesterday today and forever y'all know that verse so you can always think of Paul a persecutor and you can think but God so there is hope that but God tells me he's not finished yet. Woo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's the author and the finisher. Yeah, so he's that's not, right. There's a but God, he's not finished. <laughs> Some of y'all share what your theme was for chapter one. For those of you who have the inductive study Bible, you know, because we don't have things. We, we write our own things from the passages of scripture. So somebody tell me what you put. Only one gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had put God's messenger carrying God's message. Oh, yeah. I had Paul's testimony, once a persecutor, now a preacher. Yes. Had the gospel of Paul preached, it's not according to man, but God. Yes. And everything Paul did was about God. What an example we have. Despite his past, despite my past, despite your past. You know? Woo! This is good. This is good. All right. What about chapter two? <laughs> Share your theme with chapter two on uh, chapter two. You, Martha, was, you're on mute. Mine was verse 20. Okay. No, that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Mm -hmm. Mine was the same. <laughs> I, I got, Paul goes to Jerusalem and is accepted by the other apostles. Mm. Yes. I have, have you been crucified? Of course, we see the word gospel several times in chapter two. Um, and of course, I hope that you're marking. I ask you if you would just mark one word that it would be Jesus. And there's a reason for that. So be sure to continue to do that. Of course, we see the word grace. We see the word justified repeated several times. And we know that justified means just, it means innocent, and it means righteous. I wrote that definition down beside verse 16 because it's all in 16 and 17. So what, what did you all gain from chapter 2? One of the things that I love is that, you know, most of us have read Galatians how many times in our lives, <laughs> but you know, when you just stop and you pause and you just start looking at these verses and you just soak those in 
and you just take your time and allow the Holy Spirit just to teach you. I hope y'all are writing down your notes that you sense in your spirit when you're reading these passages and that's how he speaks to us and you know, look up some of the cross references because I'm certainly not going to mention every single one of them. But, you know, just spending time with the Lord. And it's the funniest thing because what I do first is I'll go through a chapter and I read it and then I mark it. Well, then after I've marked it, then I know what's coming next. I don't know if it's going to be the next day. Well, I know what's coming next, and that means that I'm going to have to look at these very carefully and just write down what I'm sensing, what I feel, and I always think, Lord, like I'm not getting anything out of this. What is it going to be? And then when it's time to come and sit down and write, it's just like there's just an outpouring. And I know that he does that for y'all. And I just think that is the most wonderful thing <laughs> that he is just sitting right there with us and teaching us and loving on us through that time together. And I just keep thinking about, is it Psalm 37, 4, where it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight. And that was one of the first lessons I ever taught in Sunday school. And I dissected the word delight and it meant just to take pleasure and joy in. And that's what we do when we read his word. And I, he's just so faithful and and I just love it. And I'm just so glad y'all are doing this and, you know, spending that time with him. It's just wonderful. Uh, I had had a quote, uh, actually, it must have been on the day that I was reading that. It was, don't let the urgency of your need keep you from enjoying the intimacy of his presence as you seek his will. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. When y'all get a good quote like that, always share it under the video or like today when tonight or whenever tomorrow when this is posted, you know, Martha, if you don't care to go and, and share that underneath there, because I'm going to need to write that down. I can't remember all that, <laughs> you know, because that just encourages other. That's good stuff. It just encourages everybody. That's good. You know, I remember going over and saying to you all in the video, what is the point in keeping religious things when our hearts are far from God, when we haven't died to self uh, and died to what we want? And I pray that I never am again, because I have been, that of religious folks without having a deep relationship and love and grace and mercy. I, I, that self-righteous stuff wears me out. That's what I grew up in. It is ugly. And I'm just going to say it like this. Ain't nobody need it. Ain't nobody wants it. It's ugly and it's a turnoff. And I, that's how I grew up. Did any of y'all grow up like that? If they didn't do what you thought that they should, and you didn't really even have scripture, what you had was what mom and daddy said, and they were doing the best they could. But that religious stuff is just, listen, I'm thankful for the law. I'm thankful for the Old Testament. I love the whole word of God. But when our attitudes are uglier than what our heart is trying to say or the words we're trying to say y'all that's the biggest turnoff ever have you all ever experienced that yeah it did more damage than it did good and that's something that i had to work through because a lot of that damage had been done but you know jesus was patient jesus was <laughs> you know, good and gracious and kind and help me work through that. But it, it, seeing that and experiencing that, I've had to really pray that I would not be that. I, 
I agree with that, Kim. Yeah. That was our topic in our small group last night. That's what we discussed the whole time. And everyone in our group out there was about six of us grew up under that. Oh. Well, you knew when you went to church at those certain churches that you were going to be um, preached to, I mean, you know, if you had um, any makeup or if you had on earrings or had a new boyfriend that you bought the church, you would hear a sermon on that. Oh, yeah. Of course, it never came back, you know. It, it just, <laughs> you just knew you were going to hear that. Right. You were being judged. Yeah. From the poor pit. Uh, you know, Rick and I went to a church one time and um, it was near the end and I knew what was about to go down. And I just looked at him and I said, I'm going to go to the car because I already know what's going to happen. And I already know what's going, you know, I, I already know this. And I said, so I'm going to go to the car and just kind of bow out gracefully. <laughs> he sat there and it was almost an hour longer. And he, he said, because his response was, no, I'm going to stick it out. I'm, I'm just going to see. And he got in the car and he's like, you wasn't kidding. You know, you just know what it's going to be. So, you know, their, their kindness says a lot. And, you know, speaking the truth in love. And listen, if we just remember all the grace that was extended to us, y'all, there's not a time we could really be ugly about mm -hmm. trying to make a point to somebody. Kim, when I was 16, my grandmother died. And it was my father, and he had two brothers, and the preacher preached on that one brother was saved and the other two were going to hell. Wow. We listened to that the whole, I was 16, and he would run up and down the aisle screaming and everything. And I jumped up. I was going to kick him when he came back, and my aunt grabbed me. I just was had, I'd had it, you know, because I didn't feel like he had the right to preach her funeral until my dad and his brother, they were going to hell. Mm. I, I mean, I sat there and endured, but he almost got kicked. She thought I was getting ready to run out of the church because I was upset. No, I was meeting him halfway in that aisle. And when he came by, I was planning on kicking him. <laughs> mean little hell. You. <laughs> so the whole point of this is let's be kind and love on each other. <laughs> Speak the truth and love. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything on chapter two? All right, going to chapter three, some of the key words that I found, you may have found something different were um, words of faith and believe and cursed and justified and promise, 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 promise. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all wrote that down in your Bible. The definition of promise. I also did righteousness or righteous in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let's see. I'm going to write that down. Tell me something good out of Galatians 3, y'all. I love the, the very end, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Mm. And uh, end of 14, sorry. Yes, the end of 14. And I, I did say Mark promised. Yes, I did. Okay. What did some of you get for your um, your chapter things? For chapter three. Faith in Jesus frees us from the law. Righteous shall live by faith. Uh -huh. The righteous live by faith. 
and the just shall live by faith. Hmm. A lot of faith going on in this chapter, isn't there? <laughs> Have I given y'all my chapter themes at, in each lesson? I, I normally do, but I can't remember if I did or not. I know that Sandra asked me for one, and I couldn't remember if I put them in there or not. You have, except you don't have it for three. Um, my but chapter theme was we received the promise of the Spirit through faith. And I, I guess the word promise has just stood out to me so much. It's just been a very special you know, every time I see that and I write that down, that announcement, that divine assurance of good, that promise is a blessing. It's a message. Um, and so I, that's the reason that really stood out to me. And of course, that too, uh, Rachel was in verse 14. So. I, was, I really enjoyed his uh, explanation of the, the promise starting with Abraham, that it had nothing to do with the law, that we are um, descendants from Abraham and heirs according to the promise of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And um, not that we bypass the law, yeah. but that the seed that came from Abraham uh, of course, was Christ, and he made us heirs uh, of the promise in verse 29, and I marked the word heir, not knowing that in chapter four, we were going to start with this, uh, that word too, so um, I, lo I love being an heir. There's some songs that I've sung over the years that you're an heir, join heir with Jesus, Um I think that's in the family of God. So I enjoyed reading the words promise over and over and just the promise that God gave Abraham before a law was ever needed. Yeah. Right. I had underlined that also in verse 15 or 16. Um, it, I don't know why it just stood out to me that he said, you know, that he does not say and to seeds, mm -hmm. referring to the many, but rather to the one. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought that the seed that was in Abraham and every descendant after that, that Christ You, you cut out again, Jody. It was in every person. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. The one seed. <laughs> I don't know if Jody's still talking. <laughs> That is so good. At Abraham's seed, Christ, all nations would be blessed by him, both Jews and Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Becoming one seed. Because at the end of Galatians, we all know what it says. There's neither Jew or Gentile, Greek, or, you know. So we become one seed. And you know what? I believe that's what God is still doing. That the generations are becoming one generation. And it's gen it's his generation. Because uh, girls, we're living in the end times. I don't know how you all believe, but I'm telling you, God is merging the old, the young, the middle aged, and bringing them into one generation, just like he did one seed. Mm -hmm. one seed because there's one purpose one purpose yeah i get excited about this <laughs> <laughs> i just 
you know how we get so um, excited and blessed. I just feel so blessed, you know, to be in his word and the encouragement that comes from that. And I, it's just beyond me when people don't want to experience what y'all we get, we're experiencing sharing where we're at individually, but then as a whole, like you were talking about, um, coming together and, and, and studying and being encouraged and, and loved on. I, I just feel so loved on, you know, when she was talking about being an heir, I'm like, yes, I, that's me. <laughs> that's something to get excited about. And goodness, with all the crazy that's going on, we need that, don't we? We need that. And that we should really love each other. Yeah. Because it, it says in verse 28 that we are yeah. all one in Christ Jesus. So if we're all one in him, we should be able to get along. <laughs> but that's not the case. Right. You know, sometimes you hear people talk about so-and-so in another church. And I, I'm thinking, you know, what are you going to do with that when you get to heaven? Because we're all one in him. Mm -hmm. That's what I prayed in John chapter 17, that, that we would be one as he and the Father and the Spirit are one. You know, and, and in Book of Acts, there's a lot of places where it says they were in one accord. Does that mean that they that they were agreement in everything? No, but they were in one accord about the main things, mm -hmm. and that's the things we can we can uh, you know lay aside our differences if it's not something that's that's going to contrary to the main core of what what Christianity right. is. We're all one. We're in one body, you know. And there was a place where the uh, the disciples asked him because they wasn't, you know, a part of Jesus's discipleship. Then, so what should they do? Should they shut? No, because that doesn't mean that they're not a part of God's, you know, household. Because they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because we believe a little differently here and there, we're still supposed to be one, and we are supposed to prefer one another above ourselves. There's no big eyes and little views. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I liked about the book of Acts too, that everybody had the same, they had everything in common with one another. And if somebody lacked one thing, the one that had more, they would sell theirs. What in the world would happen if we did that today? If we had extra and we sold it so that we could help that one that don't have the, what, right. what they need or, or, you know, so that they can have everything in common with us. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the Bible is amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> it is. And the book of Acts is what the, what the church is supposed to look like. Yeah. They, there's no place that it ever said that they quit looking like that. But somewhere along the line, it's been watered down and watered down and watered down. But God wants us to see what the church looks like. That's how the church began. And that's how the church should end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is so good <laughs> anybody else got anything you want to share about chapter three I got a little side note that says the law could not produce righteousness you know the law could point you out what your sin was but it could not produce righteousness in you yeah why Christ had to come because he's the only one that can make you righteous. Oh yeah. I had written down uh, the law shows us our faults, but it can't do anything to fix them. No, that's right. Yeah. I think you had, you had said this in your teaching, um, Kim was our believing has nothing to do with the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always think about um, Romans 15, 4, and I, I may have given it to y'all already. Um, when, when we're talking about the law, the Old Testament, things like that. But when you look at Romans 15, 4, um, it reminds us that we, and it proves that we need the Old Testament because it says for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction 
so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. That's like one of my favorites right there. Mm -hmm. And um, it proves that we need it, but the law does not make us righteous. And I'm thankful, you know, somebody said the other night, and I've heard this for years, you know, when he sees me, he sees the blood of the lamb and the righteousness of Jesus. And, um, and I'm so thankful for that. So thankful. I'm thankful that we're heirs according to the promise. We have so much as his children to be excited about despite what we've said, the crazy that's going on. You know it. We can still smile. We may be hurting, but we can there's still joy in knowing that he knows. You know. So that's that's good. Um, if, if you don't have anything else to share about Galatians 3, we're going to discuss Galatians 4, 5, and 6 on our last Zoom meeting for the study of Galatians. Vicki, when is that scheduled? Is it the 8th or the 15th? March the, March the 8th. Our last uh, chapter 6 will post on March 1st. Okay. So we can be able to discuss six. We want to give everybody time to look at it and be able to listen to it. So the following Tuesday, March the 8th at 730, yeah. <laughs> we will <laughs> we will have the, the next Zoom to, to wrap up the book of Galatians. Okay. All right. And she'll send you out an email about that. Uh, but I just wanted you to kind of get it on your calendar. And again, if you can't meet, uh, make it, that's fine. We're going to, we're going to record and. Um, oh, uh, yeah, we're going to try to get it posted and, and all that. Um, if you or someone, you know, that's in our group are not getting the emails every week, please let, let us know so that we can correct whatever's going on that you're not getting those uh, videos. Do you like the videos coming out at midday? Mm -hmm. Okay, because we, we changed that up a little bit. So um, there is much to pray about and I don't wanna do an extended time here as far as that um, because we could get into all the details when God knows the details. Um, you, you've seen on our page, you know, we were praying for Brenda White. We're praying for, um, Lauren Payne. Um, I haven't had an update on her. Um, we, uh, need to pray for Vicki's family. And then, um, my brother-in-law Larry is recovering from COVID, but, He's still not fully well. And um, let's see, Vicki was. And Leah McLean that usually is here on the Zooms. She sent me a specific prayer request and asked that we would pray for her and her brother, Andy. Um, Andy had a knee replacement and he only went to one PT and he got COVID. So he hasn't been able to go back to PT oh. and they're telling him that if he's not able to bend his knee at certain, I think it's 105 degrees, which I'm not medical, that they're going to have to go back in and break up the scar mm -hmm. tissue. And his wife also has the virus. So Leah is having to be a caregiver. And she said, just to pray for them. Um, so she said that she wasn't able to do Galatians because of, of all that she just didn't have time to to fit it in and I saw Robin Nelson that's usually in our group mm -hmm. has texted asking for us to pray for a very close friend of hers that I think he's about three weeks in the hospital and it doesn't look, look good promising okay right I, I would appreciate go ahead yeah I went into our page and I went to, I thought the tab that said prayers because I was going to request prayer, but there was like nothing in there. Is that where we're supposed to be putting all that? 
You should be I, able to send want to post one. Just like if you hit the prayer tab, if it doesn't work, yeah. let me know. You hit the prayer tab and you should be able to go in and post a prayer to the page. We don't have a prayer list per se listed on the group page. Okay. We tried that at one time. And oh, okay. It, it just didn't work yeah. out. It, the video started getting lost down in the page. So oh, you, but okay. you, if you have a specific prayer request, an immediate need, if you'll click on that prayer tab, you should be able okay. to post okay. in the group. We just ask that you turn off a lot of commenting because it bumps the videos down and then people can't find the videos. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, I, I went on the tab, but it was like, there's no prayers here. So I went, oh. That's for you to so I didn't. I didn't leave my prayer request. But <laughs> yes, um, you can. a week ago today, I had a complete hip replacement. So I'm just going to come right out and ask for continued prayers for my recovery. Yes. So far, it's going well, and that it just continues to do so. Thank you. Yes. And anytime you're having trouble, just shoot. Um, Vicki handles all the page, so shoot her a private message. And when she gets home, she doesn't have that on her phone. When she gets home and gets on her computer, she'll look at all those and see what needs to be done and, and all that stuff. Um, but um, where'd Donette go? There she is. Um, I appreciate y'all so much being here. Stay in the word, stay close to and pray for our group. I got up. It was the sweetest thing this morning. I got up and after I had some, well, during my prayer time, I always, you know, try to remember Lord, the, the lift group, you know, those women, you know, all those needs and, you know, and, you know, and, and all that and, and lift you up. And so I did that this morning and it went long. So I got to work and Donette had sent me a message and said, lift has been prayed for today. And so listen, that is so encouraging to know that God knows every one of us in this group and that he knows every need that's represented and every desire and every longing, you know? And so that's just how good he is. So you've been prayed over and y'all just keep bathing lift in your prayers and um it's not about the size it's about we want lives changed hearts changed uh for the glory of god for the glory of god and so um i'm just so thankful to be a part of such a group this is this is great oh i do want you all to pray um for and sheila knows the details on this sheila's pastor um had posted this on his page and i shared it on mine that the children's, uh, the orphanage there in, Cock is it Cockamega, Sheila, um, has been destroyed, the van that was purchased, and it's going to take like a $30,000 to replenish that for, and it's for like 150 children, right? The orphanage is for 150 children, and y'all, they need, they need transportation, and so that's a need, and God knows, and listen, Vicky, the the person that's over that could tell us stories that would make the hair on our head stand straight up because she has to depend on God for everything that you and I take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, I, we don't mean to, but she has to trust and have faith in him for everything. And so y'all pray, pray about this, this that's needed there for those children. It's, it's a great need, a great work, um, you know, so pray about that. I would appreciate, Kim, um, this small group, particularly remembering my Hannah, um, my daughter and her family who are getting ready to move to Moscow. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, it's looking like March 25th. Mm -hmm. But um, they're going there to be missionaries and, you know, obviously given everything going on in the Ukraine and um, we have some real misgivings, but I also know that God would not lead them somewhere um, and not protect them and watch over them. But it's um, really hard <laughs> to trust him <laughs> with that. So it's a little scary. We would all be in, in that same way, in that same boat, Barbara. We would all be concerned. And yes, absolutely. 
Well, if there are no more requests, I'm going to ask Donette to close this. Vicki, before we close in prayer, Donette, I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer. Vicki, is there anything that we're supposed to know, do, schedule what? Because you're the brains. No, that's scary. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think it's good. And again, we want to keep this page fresh and the, the group, so to speak. That's one of the reasons why we tried to go to email. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let us know. Mm -hmm. uh, this group is about you guys participating. It's not, we've said this from two year, two and a half years ago, this is not the Kim and Vicki show. Mm -hmm. um, it's about you guys and how we can minister and just love on each other and, and bond together. So we encourage feedback. I, I, I need it. Uh, so just Give us that feedback if you've got anything. Absolutely. All right, if that's it, Donetta, you want to close us in prayer and we'll say mm -hmm. good night. Precious Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, God. Thank you for each lady that's on this group right now. Thank you for the ones that even couldn't join, God, but maybe they're doing Galatians with us anyway. We just ask you to bless us, Lord. Continue to bless this group. Continue to bless Kim. Continue to pour into her, God, what you would have her to pour out. And God, we just thank you, Lord, for the fellowship, God, that we have on this group. God, we pray for every request that was brought forth here tonight, God. And we ask you, Lord, to meet every request, God, according to your great knowledge. Father, you know these things, and God, you know things that we don't even know about them, but God, we ask you, God, for healing, we ask you for salvation, we ask you for protection, and we ask you, Father, just to continue to go with us, lead us, and guide us, Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Y'all, we'll see you soon, stay in his word, and we'll get back together soon. Love y'all. Bye. Good night. Good night.